Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and finally welcome back to Sam's Trains Live. I I can't tell you how much I thoroughly enjoyed the, the last series of these live shows I did before Christmas. Probably the most exciting thing I've ever done on YouTube, so I've got all uh, you guys to thank for that. But anyway, I'm back with another five weeks of Sam's Trains Live. I know I did seven before, but I think five is just a nicer number. It means I haven't got to come up with quite as much stuff and hopefully it won't be, uh, you know, won't be too much stress. But, uh, you know, I'm going to be here for five weeks. Today is going to be a bit of a train fare special. Um, as you can see, I've got some train fare goodies right here, which I'm going to be taking out of their various bags and things and taking a look at. And who knows, later on, I'll be able to run them on the track and that'll be fantastic. Um, so, yeah, that's something I've never done before. I've never done a train fare unboxing live before. I don't know really how great it's going to be because obviously I can't show you stuff super close up. But it is what it is, and uh, hopefully, you know, you'll just enjoy hearing about bargains and uh, hearing about stuff I've been up to, and, uh, and then, of course, seeing it running on the line. So, anyway, let's do some of the uh, housekeeping stuff. Let's, uh, let's get caught up. Obviously, I have got Super Chat enabled, I think, and uh, you'll be able to click on the little dollar sign down there if you want. And basically, all the Super Chat is, it's, uh, it's a way for you to basically donate money to the channel. And obviously, I would never ask any of you guys um, to, give you to give me money. Um, my videos are all completely free to watch, and I would never charge any of you for it. But if you're someone who likes to watch the channel, if you enjoy what I do, and you spend a lot of time watching, then the option's there. If you've got some money to spend and you want to help support the channel, please feel free to, and as always, I will be really, really grateful if you do. Of course, anybody who donates any amount of money will get a massive shout out and a massive thank you from me, because obviously I don't expect anybody at all to do it, and amazingly people do, and that is, you know, so kind and generous of you. And as always, if you donate five pounds or more, or five dollars or more, or, you know, from wherever you are, whatever currency you work with, you will get an opportunity to choose your very own locomotive to run in the stream, in the in one of the live shows. You can choose any loco you like, as long as I've got it, and you can even pick the rolling stock you'd like to go with it, and that's sort of my thank you. So if you want to get your own request shown on the stream, uh, just send five pounds or five dollars or five euros, I suppose, and I will absolutely do that for you. Now, there is a little bit of an extra bonus that you're going to get this time. Uh, there's going to be a bit of a giveaway during this series, and the giveaway is not going to happen today. I'm not going to be giving um, this special thing away until the last episode in five weeks time but anybody who donates any amount is going to be in with a chance of winning it and uh, I'm going to draw it in five weeks so I'm just going to grab what it is and people have been asking about this already but uh, here it is this is what you're going to win now when you see this, you're going to think it's Bullman, right? Well no this isn't Bullman, this is Bullman's brother and actually Bullman has got quite a few brothers I bet you didn't know this, did you? But there are lots of Bullmans out there. I mean, here's three. In fact, there's ten in total, but we're only interested in this one today. This is uh, a Bullman, but he's called Bilius. And that isn't Bilius as in Bill, the name. It's Bilius as in bleh, Bilius Attack. And I thought that was a, a nice name for a cow on a giant wagon. So uh, that is going to be the giveaway prize. I've only made ten of these, and as far as I know, there is only ever going to be ten. And uh, the only way you can get one is to win it. And uh, you're going to get these certificates with it as well. This is a, certif a certificate of authentication. It's number two of ten. And uh, yes, it has the name Bilius, spelt as in Bilius Attack. So uh, hopefully that will be entertaining for you. Now, I'm only making ten, as I said, so it's going to be quite competitive. You can't buy them, you can only win them. And I I think I'm only going to be giving away two every year or something like that, so it's very competitive. And the first one is going to be given away at the end of this series of live streams. So if you want to support the channel, um, send me a super chat and you will get in with a chance of winning Bilius here, Bilius the Bullman. And uh, there are going to be other Bullman brothers along. <laughs> <laughs> in the future. So yeah, that's just a little idea. I don't want to just take money off people and not give anything back. So you've got the uh, the shout outs, you've got the requests, and uh, you've got the uh, the competition for Bullman's brother Bilius. Try saying that 10 times faster. All right, so let's see what we're going to do first. Right. First of all, I noticed when I started streaming that my computer decided to do some updates, although it can't be an update because I made sure it was completely up to date before. So you guys let me know if it's lagging at all. I'm hoping it isn't, and I'm hoping it's synchronized, but I thought we would start by just having a bit of a catch up. I'll take a look at the chat, and you guys can tell me what's going on, and I'll give a few people shout outs, because a lot of people have been asking for them. So uh, there's a few of this, what if every one of his subscribers donated one pound, says uh, Jay Current. J Torrent 7K. Well, that would be fantastic. Although, of course, I would never ask anybody. I would never insist that anybody uh, donates, of course. And please only do if you can spare it and, uh, you know, if you won't miss it. Because, uh, of course, I'm doing okay here. But if you want to support the channel and keep it going, then that's something you can do. 
Uh, how do we, we how do we win a bullman? Says Artboy54. So basically, if you send a super chat during this series uh, of five streams, so any time during the next five weeks, um, I'm going to be drawing a winner on the last episode, and then you will be winning Billius. So if you want a cow called Billius mounted onto a wagon, that's how you can get one. Um, Caleb Hill, Caleb D Hill, I'm sorry, says shout out please. So there you go. There's a shout out. Um, 8 Mega Blade says, the synchro is a little off my end. Let me just turn the volume up and have a listen. How do we win a Bullman? It looks pretty much there. It isn't perfect, obviously, because uh, it's just really difficult to get it perfect. But I think it's about there. Uh, Jake Darling says, uh, oh, he's donated £5. Thank you very much, Jake. He says, hi, Sam. It's me again. Friendly neighbourhood super chatter. I'm moving house on Tuesday, so wish, wish me luck. Can we get a BR Green Diesel with the Maroons? Okay, nice idea, Jake. I will, I will make a note of that and I'll do it later on. In fact, what I really need to do is uh, have a copy of the Super Chats up on this window so I can do it. Now, obviously today I am doing a train fare unboxing. So I'm going to be showing you a whole load of rolling stock. So if any of the rolling stock tickles your fancy, that is very much uh, up for grabs today. Um, not to have to, to show as a request. So if you want to do that, uh, feel free to. I'm just getting up my Super Chat page. So there we go. Thank you very much, Jake. That is very, very kind of you. Obviously, like I say, I wouldn't ever ask anybody to donate. But the fact that people want to and the fact that people can is, uh, is really amazing to me. So thank you. Uh, Green Ninja 2404 says, Hello, Sam. How is your day? It's very good, thank you. It was my birthday yesterday and we've been we've had a meal today already so it's been a busy day and I've got some interesting stuff to show you on that later on but uh, yeah I'm good thank you and I hope you are too um, Vince video says Sam can you review the blue comet um, never heard of that one what is that if anyone can tell me what the blue comet is I'm probably being ignorant actually I probably should know what the blue comet is uh, Flory Flory F04, hope I said that right, says please shout out, so that's okay. Yeah, Vince's videos is definitely asking for the blue comment. Well, I don't own a blue comment, whatever, it, blue comment, not blue comment. Whatever that is, I don't own one, but uh, if, it's, if it's something I like the sound of, I, I might as well have a look at, look at one. Um, Farming Legend, how did you get into trains? Oh, this is an old story. I tell this quite often, actually, but it's basically all down to TARDIS Rescue. Uh, you might have heard of TARDIS Rescue. He's, uh, he's my friend Dan, who runs the TARDIS Rescue YouTube channel. He makes fantastic Thomas stories, and uh, he has models, and I saw uh, his models, and that started the bug. You, you don't need much to, to get the bug in this hobby, but uh, that's what did it. Uh, that's what did it. Clay Johnson says, please shout out. There you go. Hope, hopefully you like the shout out. Uh, it was my birthday four days ago, says William Town. Well, happy birthday for four days ago. We were almost born on the same day. Um, who's your favourite Thomas character, says RDHNL. I think I've got the letters right there. It's whizzing past a bit quick. Um, probably Gordon or Emily, that's normally what I say. Although Toby recently, I really like the Toby model. Um, Owens Railway says, hi Sam, sorry I'm late. Well, you're only eight minutes late, so... Don't worry about it. People don't have to apologise for being late. People always say, sorry I'm late. Come on, you could watch you could watch it whenever you like. And to be honest, I'm just grateful that you're watching it all. Uh, Jack Joss says, good morning. So wherever he is, it must be morning time. But uh, it's at five o'clock for me now, obviously. Um, Box Fort Bros says, I just got a Hornby Smoky Joe. I love the Hornby Smoky Joe. I don't own one, actually, but I always love seeing them. So enjoy your Smoky Joe. That's going to be fantastic. Uh, BW Eldon 13 says, please a shout out. Um, Alexander Botha says, I'm the Garrett guy. Okay, well, you made of, are you a Garrett typing on a keyboard? That's interesting. Um, Brad Staplay says, there is a P2 replica is being built. Yes, there is, and that's, I can't wait to see that finished. I think there's two, though, isn't there? There's Cock of the North, and is it Prince of Wales or something like that? If they got two of them to run, I don't know what I'd do. That would be so in interesting, and hopefully Hornby would make uh, a version of uh, Prince of Wales or whatever it's called. That would be fantastic. Marty Party Hat, <laughs> what a name, says, good afternoon. So, good afternoon, Marty Party Hat. Uh, Jesse Hudy says, how are you, Sam? I'm very, very good, thank you. I'm just pleased to be streaming again. I'm a bit nervous, as I always am to start with, but uh, hopefully it's not too bad. And finally then, for now, Mangle says shout out. So, there you go, there's your shout out. And I'll get on. To, I'll talk to you guys again later on. I'm not going to just uh, ditch you. So, keep, that, keep going in the chat, and uh, later on I'll come back to it, and we'll, uh, we'll talk again. But uh, I better I better really get started on some of this train fare stuff. So basically, I'll explain what I'm going to do. Um, all right, so here's what I'm going to do. These are the bags of rolling stock, and I haven't got rid of my Wren collection or anything. I've just moved it over there onto the table so that I can deal with this stuff. Um, I'm going to be unboxing the rolling stock. I say unboxing. It's not, it's not really unboxing. I'm just going to be taking it out of its bags and things. But I'm going to take it all out. I'm going to talk about it. I'll try and remember 
how much I paid for stuff. I actually went to the train fair two weeks ago and as soon as I got home from the train fair I unpacked everything and cleaned it up and made sure it worked okay and it's been in the bags ever since. So actually it's it's like I bought them and then I've had two weeks to forget about them. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it will be a little bit of a surprise uh, what I've got in here. And uh, so let's go with the first bag. I don't remember what's in this big bag particularly but uh, let's figure it out. So, ooh, let's have a look at these. Right. So looking at this stuff, this stuff was, I think, three for ten pounds. So it's not the best bargain in the world if you're talking old, nasty wagons. Uh, it's about three pounds something, about three pounds thirty each, something like that. So pretty not, pretty much not bad. I normally stick to around three pounds per wagon, which I know is cheap, but I don't tend to buy modern ones. So here's the first one. Then this is a Pepsi wagon, and I got this again. If you think about this for three pounds, this is quite a modern one. It's got the super modern Hornby metal wheels. It doesn't have NEM couplings or anything like that, but it is fairly modern and it's in mint condition so three quid for that I thought was was really quite good um, and there's another actually so that's another one except this one's not quite as good because it's only got the plastic wheels if you look so yeah that's not too bad though and they still look good together and hey if I really wanted to I could uh, I could fix it up now of course I've got loads of tankers as you know I've got I must have about 15 tankers but I don't have any white tankers so this one is a petrochemicals and plastics it says methanol and I've never seen a white tanker before like this it's probably a recipe for disaster because I bet it will um, I bet it will get dirty easily and uh, this one was a little bit dirty but I managed to take it all apart and clean it up so again £3.50 it does have plastic wheels and of course it doesn't have NEM couplings or anything like that but I believe those are in the railroad range so they're still quite common now this is a theme for today as you can see this is an SC wagon uh, this again was 3 50 I think everything in this bag was 3 50 not 350, a bit less, 330 something. This one's got metal wheels. Uh, there's another one here which also has metal wheels. I seem to remember, at this particular train fair, for some reason, there were loads and loads of these green SC wagons ranging from, well, there were some really poor condition ones for about two pounds going. And then there were some just like these, really, with the metal wheels in really good condition going for five pounds or something like that. But I didn't pay five pounds for any. But I bought these two for 350 a piece, which is probably about the most I would go for. But because they're in good condition, I thought that was okay. Oh, we've got a bit of a drinks theme going on today. Here's another one, 7-Up. I don't know how they would really store 7-Up in here. And again, would in real life, would they really have a giant tanker like this of pure Pepsi? I don't know. That must be just a branding thing. But uh, yeah, again, I don't know how they'd store 7-Up in a wagon like this. But it certainly looks nice. And look, it's got uh, the sort of wood effect on the inside. And it's really quite a nice detailed wagon. It's, uh, it's a pretty standard wagon. You see them a lot. But of course, the green really makes a difference to it and yeah it's got plastic wheels but again the price is pretty good for that I thought all right here's one that I've got quite a few of this is a red arrows um, uh, well box van or whatever you want to call it I've got quite a few of these I'm not saying I'm ever gonna have as many you know I'm not gonna have enough to ever make a train as big as my ocean wagon train for example but you know I've got three or four now so that might make a nice train. Here's a weird one. I think this one is Dapol. No, no, it's Airfix, but it's probably owned by Dapol. It's a blue circle product. <laughs> um, Ferrero co Concrete. I nearly said Ferrero Rocher. You know, I don't know what it is, but it's a nice yellow sort of box van. Uh, it's got the Dapol Airfix style couplings on them, which are okay. They seem to work just fine. Uh, plastic wheels, but metal axles. For the price, not bad. I've never seen one before either, so uh, I just pick things up like that that I've not seen before. And uh, fine. Oh, another one of those SC wagons. This one's not quite as great because it has the uh, the plastic wheels, but uh, it was in good nick, so I got that. And another tanker. This one's more of your standard shell tanker, but uh, it's got it had the metal wheels. It wasn't too badly marked up. Uh, but, uh, you know, so I thought, yeah, for £3.50, I might as well stock up on tankers and get a couple more. So that was those, uh, £3.50 a piece. As you can see, I bought quite a lot of those. Um, yeah, I try not to waste my money too much, but uh, I can't resist rolling stock. So see what you guys thought about that first bag. Does anybody uh, see anything in there that they think is a good bargain? Anything you think is a bad bargain? Um, is any of it rare? If you spot any rare stuff, let me know, because I don't really know too much about what's rare kdev 28yt says can i have a shout out please yes there you go fergus fan one says how do you get a picture on the wall uh, that's the wall of fame just behind me you can send we can email pictures to me at uh, samstrains at outlook.com as long as you took them yourself i'll print them out and put them up and in fact i've got loads of pictures to show uh, later on in the stream of uh, people that have sent them in so i'm going to be showing those but let's get on to the next bag this is a posh bag you normally get really thin bags but this one's uh a thick 
strong bag. All right, first things first, I'm going to grab the same, well, all of the same kind, because you, know, you don't know what I'm doing here, do you? I'm sorry, I'm being vague. Let me grab one more. More of these SC wagons. I mean, I wasn't joking. For some reason, at this train fair, from different sellers, there were loads of these. So there's four of them. They're all pretty much the same. They've all got metal wheels, I think. Yeah, all got metal wheels. All in pretty good condition. So actually, that's really good. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven I bought from the train fair. And I, I reckon I must have had about three of them already. So we're talking a train of 10 of those SC wagons now. So I'm really looking forward to that. I, I don't know why. It might be the OCD inside me, but I love to see trains with wagons of all the same name on them. I don't know whether that's very prototypical, but to, to me that just looks fantastic. So my ocean wagons train, for example, I love it. Uh, so speaking of wagons of the same type, this particular seller also had a load. And I think these were a little bit cheaper. I think these were something like three for eight pounds or something like that. So it was cheaper. Uh, but the, here are three bird's eye fish finger vans. And you've seen these before because I've got at least one of these. Um, and again, I'm thinking along the same lines, thinking maybe have a train of fish fingers. Um, I don't know who would want to buy so many fish fingers. I don't know, a supermarket perhaps. Uh, but these are really nice. This, this one actually that I'm looking at now has got so clean wheels. It looks like it's never been run unbelievably clean. Um, that, those are metal. Uh, these are not quite as clean. I mean, they're clean. I've cleaned them, but uh, this, one, it, this one is shiny. It's like a mirror. Uh, you won't be able to tell there. You might be able to. Can you see the shinier one? <laughs> I don't suppose you're that interested, are you? Right, let's, let's move on. But yeah, they've all got metal wheels, except that one, which has got plastic wheels on metal axles. But uh, again, two for eight, well, was it three for eight pounds? It's not bad, is it? Less than three quid each. So I was really pleased with that. Um, there's a couple, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> there's another one. So that's, uh, what's that? That's five of them. That one's got metal wheels as well. So I like that. Now there wasn't, it wasn't a, a perfect experience at the train fair because I did buy some locos and we'll get onto that right now. I don't have them anymore though. So stay tuned to hear the story on that. Two of these Triang style Norstad, uh, yeah, North, Norstand wagons. Uh, they're very lovely. I do have a couple of those already, maybe just one or two actually, but uh, they're very nice, aren't they? They're quite nice. I like the blue. It's like a bluey green. It's a marine sort of colour. I really like it though. And again, they both had um, they both have uh, metal wheels. I'm just trying to think. I think actually this came from a chap that I went back to later on, and you won't know what I'm talking about. But uh, yes, there's uh, there's something else. There's kind of a surprise um, coming up, which I'll show you towards the end. But uh, okay, that's bag two of three. Let's see what people think of that one. I don't think there was anything rare in that bag though, was there? I think that was all pretty uh, standard stuff. Can I have a shout out, says James Smith Studios. Of course you can, there you go. Um, George Pomonos, Pomonis says Land Rover. Well, thanks for that. Uh, it's nice to hear about Land Rovers. Um, I think uh, NK Productions 2014 <laughs> deserves a shout out. Yes, he does. Hello to Nathaniel. Thank you very much for watching if you're still here. I'm sorry I didn't give you a shout out earlier, but he was here before I started streaming, so that does deserve a shout out. Okay, this is the uh, the final bag of Locos. There's, there's, there's more to show, but this is the final bag. And uh, here is a bit of a, an impulse buy for you. It's a couple of the Hornby Clerestory coaches. Now, I've, I have got a few of these already, but some of them are the old Triang ones, which don't have such nice lining on them. Uh, so I'm really trying to sort of... Um, Fish the, fl well, flush those out and, <laughs> and get some more modern ones like this. Uh, they're not that modern, but they have at least got the nicer lining. No interiors on them or anything like that. They have plastic wheels, unfortunately, and they were £8.50 each, but I got knocked off about a fiver for this whole bag. So consider it probably about £7.50 each or something like that. Not bad price, actually. Um, I've paid over £10 for these clerestories before, so I'm actually really pleased with that. And they're in good condition, as you can see. I mean, that's pretty pristine really, isn't it? And one of them's a break. I did have a break already, but uh, you know, it was a good price. So I couldn't resist. I really couldn't resist. And I have actually put some weights inside those because they were so light. I think it's because they don't have interiors. They just feel really light. So I actually uh, took the, the roofs off. You take the roofs off on them. Uh, I can't do it now because they are the roofs are held on with a screw on the bottom. But you can take the roofs off and then you've got an entire coach space for, to put weights in and I just put some of those self-adhesive weights in and it's it's done a good job I didn't add a lot to them but it's done the trick all right here's a wagon 
which is quite interesting. Never seen one of these before. Now, I own about six of this model, I think, but uh, none of them are brown like this. The only ones I've got are grey, and you've probably seen them. I've got some, I can see them where I am now, actually. They're all grey, and I, I know they're quite good. They're fairly modern, they're Hornby. It's got um, <laughs> very uh, stiff wheels, actually. That might need a little bit of oil. Um, but this was in, um, what was it, a three pound box or something like that? This uh, particular seller had a box with uh, wagons in it for three pounds. Now, I don't know why this would go into the bargain box because it's, it's a really nice wagon. It's in perfect condition. It's got all its buffers. It's got the metal wheels and it's got the sort of modern, well, it's not that modern, but it's the Dapple Airfix style coupling on it. So I don't know why it was going cheap, but three pounds is my kind of price. So I went for it. And there was a couple of other bits in that box. Another Arnold Sands wagon. You know, I've got a few of those. Again, metal wheels, pretty good condition. I can't see any marks on it. And uh, any of them any of them that do come with marks on I just um, clean them up so it's not a big deal usually here's another mighty white again uh, a three pound box bargain which also had a bit of a discount on it so that's nice plastic wheels unfortunately but I do like these bread um, these bread uh, cars vans not cars um, yeah I love them. I love bread actually I'm a big bread person so I like my bread cars it's nice to have a few of those and I reckon I've got two or three of those already so you know I'm starting a rake and uh, the last wagon for now is this it's a 16 ton wagon, I reckon it's a Triang style one. It hasn't got the Triang wheels though, it's got the more recent Hornby wheels. But um, you know, oh it's, the wheels aren't very, oh I've not done a good job of cleaning those wheels. Can you see that? If you can't see it, um, then just assume they are perfectly clean. Yes, it's a perfectly clean wheeled wagon. Uh, but yeah, really nice, I do like these uh, old Triang wagons and it's got the, the later Hornby wheels so that's even better. Alright. So that's my whole lot of wagons, um, I will run some of them later on, so I'm not going to start uh, you know, lifting up the tray and probably dropping them everywhere, um, but I will run some of them later. Now, obviously, normally when I go to these train fairs, I come back with a loco of some description, and this was no exception, I bought two locos. Uh, but really, really look at it. Well, basically, I bought two locos. I came home with them. I did my thing with them. I serviced them, uh, you know, went and checked them. And they both had pretty serious problems with them. And so, so luckily, I uh, live about half an hour away from the train fare. So I was able to drive down to the train fare again, get back in. The guy let me back in. And I managed to take them back and um, get my money back. So that's so lucky. So I can really recommend don't buy engines at train fares unless you're within, um, you know, unless you close to home. Um, you obviously take 9 volt batteries with you to train fares and test engines and things, but uh, I did that and uh, the faults with these engines actually didn't show up with those. So here's what I bought, I've got a picture of it. This is the first one. Now this one, it's, let me find out, it's a Betty well tank or something like that, BT, I don't know how you pronounce it. It's one of the DJ models one, uh, uh, yeah, DJM models or something like that. Um, it's a 240, so I absolutely uh, jumped at the chance to buy this thing. And it really is a cute looking loco, by the way, really, really lovely. Now, I've thought about buying one in the past online, and they were about £100 or something like that, and the seller at this train fair was selling it for £85, and I eventually got him down to about 82 so I bought it for that. But uh, when I got, and he said, oh, it, it's amazing, you're going to love this, it, it's silent, it runs beautifully, so I thought, oh, this will be good. So I got the thing home, right, put it on the track, it was very, very hesitant, it didn't run well at all. Um, it cut out on the points, but it also cut out uh, where there wasn't points, it cut out on curves and sometimes even straights. So I thought, right, well, mm, this was supposed to be brand new as well, by the way, I was told, it's brand new, um, it's, it's only been run to test. So I thought, well, that's odd for a new loco, but who knows, it could have been sat in its box for a long while. So I got it out. It was an absolute nightmare to service the thing. I mean, I'm not kidding. To get them, well, you don't just take the body off. You take the sort of upper part of the body off, uh, the running board stays in place, and then you can get to the motor, which was actually a tiny little helicopter motor. It was literally, the motor was this big. It was a tiny little thing. Quite an impressive motor. But uh, yeah, it was a nightmare to get the thing apart. It didn't go back together again properly. The body sort of um, flexed and bent, and it was, oh, it was terrible. I couldn't get onto, I couldn't really get access to the pickups very easily either. That took a lot of uh, puzzling to figure out how to get to those. I did eventually get to the pickups and clean them and everything like that. And uh, once it was all together, I noticed, A, there was a big solder burn on the running board. And I don't believe that could have come from the factory. That must have been done by a previous owner. And also, all the pipe work on the body was uh, very loose as well. And I'd noticed that before, so it's not something I'd done while I was servicing it. But I just thought to myself, this can't be a new loco. I bought, I spent 80-odd 
quid on this thing thinking it was brand new when really I'm not that impressed with it it was not that detailed so why it costs over £100 to buy I don't know it ran badly and it had solder burns and things on it as well a big a big sort of round burn in the running board I just thought you know this isn't right so I took it back and the guy to be fair to him was very very uh, generous well not generous he did the right thing but he was apologetic and he gave me my money back and that was great and I've just seen that Michael Eldred has, uh, has sent me a super chat for £5 he says can you run the trying B12 pulling your bird's eye wagons also a very happy birthday thanks Michael that's so kind of you thank you and absolutely yes I'll do that so I'll grab these bird wagons uh, bird wagons bird's eye wagons later on and uh, pop the B12 did you say which B12 the trying one yes all right I'll do that right so where are they so yeah that was the Betty well tank or anything not too impressed by the model itself I don't I, well I like the look of the model, put it that way, but uh, the way it was designed inside didn't appeal to me personally. But also the fact that it was damaged by a previous owner when I thought it was new. That put me off, so unfortunately that went back. Right, so the other loco I bought, uh, less of a story to go with it, let me show it to you, was this. So this is a loco that I've never owned before. The only Royal, it's a Royal Scott. Uh, the only Royal Scott I've owned in the past has been a mainline one, and if you know what, if you know mainline, you'll know they're not absolutely superb runners and so when I saw a modern Hornby Royal Scott I thought fantastic yes I'm gonna get one and it was used to be fair it wasn't brand new and I paid 60, 60 I think it was priced at 65 pounds and he knocked five pounds off so I got it for 60 pounds and when I got it at home on the track the worst thing that can happen happened I put it onto the track gave it a little bit of power I heard the motor turn the motor started to work the loco le leapt forward a very small amount and then I could just hear motor noise and the loco was still I thought uh oh this isn't good so I took it apart thinking oh maybe I'll just need to adjust a few things maybe that some of the gears are in the wrong place but uh, very unfortunately I found that mazak rot and if you don't know what Mazak rot is, check out that uh, maintenance video on fixing the Hornby T9 that I did. Uh, that loco completely crumbled on the inside. It had fallen completely to pieces and the motor wasn't held in place anymore. Well, this one wasn't quite as bad as that. It hadn't crumbled into tiny pieces, but the uh, the motor mounting bracket wasn't holding the gears in place. And so obviously the, uh, the motor wasn't turning it. So really, unfortunately, I had to take the uh, the beautiful royal scott back and uh, once again the uh, the seller was really really gracious he said oh really really sorry um, it was tested and all that you know i'll have to strip it down and see what's wrong with it and he gave me my money back and that's the thing it will have been tested but obviously this uh, this uh, mazak rot uh, strikes over a period of time and actually i kept the business card of this guy it was uh, len smith from ravenstone model railway so a massive thank you to len smith he could have made a fuss and said no i tested it it was it was working you've broken it but he didn't and uh, yeah you know i did try and fix the thing i put a little bit of tape on the mount on the mounting bracket to see if i could uh, salvage it because i don't like returning locos you know i want to be able to fix them and make them work but uh, there was no way i could do that without a new bracket so so unfortunately I sent it back and Len was very good he gave me all my money back with pretty much no questions asked so that was fantastic so very disappointing on the loco front but uh, when I was there for the second time to take back the the broken locos uh, <laughs> I got tempted into something I don't normally get tempted but I did all right so let me show you yeah I bought this so there's a guy and he pesters me every time I'm there. He wouldn't saw me. You remember when I bought that American rolling stock one time? I bought um, a handful of American rolling stock. And he said, uh, he kept coming up to me while I was walking around the train fair. He was saying, you know, I've got some American rolling stock. You can have it for five pounds a piece. And I would say to him, well, I only paid two or three pounds for the ones I already bought. Five pounds a bit too much. And he said, well, all right, four pounds for you then, blah, blah, blah. And uh, when I was there in the morning before the issues with the locos happened, he said, you can have this whole box for 75 quid or something like that. And I thought, OK, well, I'm not really in the market for any American stuff right now. So I, I walked away. And uh, then... When I, uh, when, I take, when I took the locos back and got my refund and I'd got my money back in my pocket, I walked past him again and I saw this tray and I thought, you know, £75 isn't great. Well, it is great. It's a very generous offer. But I thought, if I offered him 60 and he said yes, that would be a great, a great price. So I said, if you take 60 for it, I'll take it. And he said, you got a deal. So I don't know how many there are. I think there are, if anybody's willing to pause and count, you can. But I think there's something like between... 22 and 27 something like that it's all american stuff i think some of it might be european except for this 
this was included in it. This is a Lima Great Western Siphon, and I know what these are because I've had a siphon before. It's not the same as the, as the siphon I've already got, but it is a siphon nonetheless. So I'm really quickly going to show you some of the stuff in here, um, but uh, I won't show you all of it because it gets a bit repetitive. But that's a Fleischmann box car. I can call this a box car. And again, I don't suppose this is American because it's got European couplings on it. Well, I think are European couplings. You've got some of these S Sue line. I don't know what, what I've never heard of Sue line before. These are probably American. Two of those, and uh, these have got the uh, the American style couplings on them. Plastic wheels, unfortunately, but other than that, pretty good condition. Um, there's a few bits of Sioux line. There's a Santa Fe wagon, which we know must be American. Uh, so there's the Santa Fe, and this one, amazingly, has got NEM couplings fitted to it. I don't expect it would have had them um, when it was built, but it's got them now, so that's very cool. That's a Santa Fe. It says, eat more beef, so there's obviously uh, some sort of beef inside there, which is good for my channel with Bullman and all that. There is another Santa Fe wagon. Uh, this one has got is very, very long, as you can see, and I thought it would be a big problem on my layout, but it's not. It's got mainline couplings fitted on it, which means I can connect it to pretty much any loco I've got. And uh, yeah, I quite like the look of that. I like the colour, and it's Santa Fe. What does it look like it's carrying? If I can't see it immediately, no, I can't see exactly what it is. But you know what? I bet a lot of you guys will know. Uh, there's a caboose. I suppose it will be a caboose. This is a Union Pacific caboose. Quite a big chunky thing, this. And again, this has got mainline couplings fitted to it, which means I can stick it on the back of my British stock if I really wanted to. So uh, that's that. And I've just seen Jake Darlin sent uh, a snooper chat. He says, oh, he said it was your birthday the other day and you never said. Yeah, it was my birthday yesterday on Saturday. Um, and now I've left a super, super chat already, but if it was indeed your birthday, then here's a gift from me. Oh, Jake, that's so kind of you, but you, I think you, yeah, you did already send one already, so don't send me any more today, Jake. I don't want you going bust just because of me, but yeah, that's really kind of you. Shall we go on a tangent? All right, we'll go on a tangent. So yesterday it was my birthday, and uh, I got a birthday cake. Hang on, I won't show you this just yet. And I have to say, this birthday cake, this is a tangent, it's nothing to do with trains, is the most ludicrous cake I've ever had. And I loved the cake, it was great. But, uh, you know, I've had it all. I've had trains, I've had windmills. But uh, this was the cherry on the top. So here it is, here's a picture of me with my cake. And I have to admit, it's a terrible photo. So uh, I'm sorry about the terrible photo. But there I am with the cake. Right, can I move this? Hang on, hang on. Here it is. Oh, no. Ugh. Here we go. As you can see, it's a penguin. And the penguin is lying with its sort of, it's lying on its front with its legs spread eagle behind it. Um, it looks like it's ready to, well, let's not go into that. But uh, as you can see, it was spread eagled forwards like that. So I thought, okay, that's an odd position. Fair enough. But uh, when we cut inside the penguin, hang on, there was, <laughs> there was a cavity in its uh, behind. And out of its bottom came a lot of fish. I mean, not real fish, they were sweets, but uh, there's one there. These sort of rancid green fish came spilling out of it. There's one just there. Um, yeah, one of the most horrendous things I've ever seen. I mean, I've, if you've ever carved into the rear of a penguin and seen the fish spill out, you'll know that it's not a very nice thing. And then to have to eat the innards and the fish and everything was pretty ludicrous. And we were in a restaurant. This was not at home. We had to do this at a restaurant. So imagine that. Um, that has to be the most ludicrous uh, birthday cake I've ever had. And it was very nice. It's nice to have sweets inside the penguin. If you can forget the fact that you're eating it out of its bottom and uh, the fact that it's probably partly digested the fish. Oh, let's not think about that. Anyway, more American <laughs> rolling stock. Sorry about the tangent. So this is a CP rail one. This one also has got uh, Hornby couplings put onto it. And uh, the Hornby couplings are on the bogeys on this one. So there's no problems with this on the curves and whatnot. Um, this one I liked. I'll have to show you this one because it's got a cow on board. So that had to be really, didn't it? There's a little cow just, yeah, you can see him in there. Uh, it says transcontinental on it. Looks like quite an old one really. But uh, I had to, you know, I, I couldn't not buy something with a cow on it. I mean, that was, it was meant to be. Uh, anything more interesting? There's a Santa Fe caboose. Let me lift it up. <laughs> this is where it all <laughs> falls out onto the floor. Ah, yep, it's going. So there you go. There's some Burlington wagons. Can you still hear me? Yep, the mic's all right. There's some tankers which have NEM couplings on them. So, and they are genuine NEM couplings. They've not just been super glued on. So they're pretty good. Um, there's this Myask. My I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, can you see the logo there? <laughs> These are cascading. I'm not going to do this anymore. 
But uh, yeah, there's a good 20 something wagons in there anyway. For 60 quid, that really isn't bad. And to say they're so much bigger than the other wagons I bought. Uh, so yes, got more American locos, which means to justify this, I'm gonna have to buy some more American locos. So if you've got any in mind, let me know. Let me know what you'd suggest. And I will start looking into getting some more American Locos because I enjoyed the Berkshire and I enjoyed the Daylight, uh, oh, it's not, yeah, Daylight Pacific, something like that. It's a GS4 anyway. I really enjoyed looking at that. So uh, yeah, if you want me to get some more American Locos, let me have some suggestions and uh, we'll take a look. All right, so let's have a little chat on here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some new entries to the Wall of Fame, and then we'll do a little bit of a Q&A. So if you've got anything you want to ask me, um, think up a question, and when I get towards the end of the Wall of Fame section, I will do that. Uh, but uh, first of all, I might as well thank my Super Chat so far. So a massive thank you to Jake Darlin, who's been the biggest donator so far. Uh, Jake and Michael Aldred as well, who also sent a super chat. You guys have been entered already into the uh, the Bullman competition, so if you want to win your own Bullman, this one is bilious. Um, just send me a super chat of any amount and you'll be entered to win this at the end of the series. And of course, as I said earlier, you get your certificate of authenticity um, saying that he, he's number two of 10. Uh, so yes, uh, that's a little bit of a, a giveaway I'm doing. If you're interested in that, you know, feel free to take part. Okay, let's take a look then at uh, some of your photos that you sent in. So I'm going to split this into two because I've had loads since I did the last set of streams. And I've just realised how much toner costs, so the pictures are a little bit smaller than they were before. But uh, I'll do my best to let you know what's going on. So this is the Little Western 11. He's got some wooden trains. Uh, looks like uh, diesel or something like that from uh, Thomas and Friends. And uh, yeah, that's a little Western 11. I've just sent that LaserJet. Uh, LaserJet has sent two pounds. Thank you very much, Laser. That's very, very kind of you. You didn't have to do that. You know that. But uh, thank you. That's very kind. You've now been entered to win Bullman, and I know you'll be extremely pleased if you win one of those. What kid wouldn't? Well, what, who wouldn't want a Bullman? <laughs> I can think of a few people. Anyway, here's Tyson, um, uh, an American diesel of some kind. I really like the look of that. And I love this uh, tall photo. There's a lot of headroom above the loco there, which I really like. Beautiful with its light shining into the lens. Really nice picture. Thank you, Tyson. That's awesome. Now, Sean has made his own custom. I don't know whether this is a... It looks like a Hornby Emily. Maybe it's a Backman Emily or something like that. But he's painted it into this ludicrous blue livery, which looks really cool, actually. Don't know whether the livery is based on anything, but it looks like the sort of Gordon Edward Thomas sort of livery. So that's very cool. Full marks for creativity there. That's a very cool idea. Uh, now, this one I have to give a shout out to. This is Oliver. Um, or Ollie, as he's called. His dad got in touch with me to say that in, I think it was February or maybe January, it was his fifth birthday, and uh, this is him uh, probably seeing one of these locomotives for the first time, and as you can see, he's just amazed by the size of it. So, hi, Oliver. I hope you had a fantastic birthday, and your dad asked me if I would give you a shout-out. So there it is. And, of course, your picture is going to go up on my wall of fame. Here's Mick L2. This is uh, going back to basics. He's got a Hornby Thomas, it looks like, there, and uh, he's uh, showcasing that for, for everybody. So uh, thank you, Mick. That's very, very cool. And here's one I like. I love it when people draw stuff. So this is Lucas. And it looks like he's drawn some kind of wagon or something. If I look closely, you might, I might be able to spot some other stuff. But it's just very, very detailed. Uh, it's a lovely pencil drawing, which is absolutely fantastic. So thank you very much for that, Lucas. I've just noticed that the ugly duckman has said, uh, welcome back, happy birthday. I'll email you a link to the Backman Mogul I saw, secondhand on Hattons. If I send two SCs, do I get two entries to the comp? Yeah, if, fair enough. If you want to donate every week, um, you can have as many entries as you like. But uh, keep it to, say, two entries per episode, because I don't want anyone spamming it, uh, because then obviously they'll, they'll win all out. But uh, sure, you can have an entry every week or two if you like uh, and again thank you so much for the super chat that is really really kind of you he sent uh, five pounds in and ugly duckman if you want a request for an engine that i have got uh, please feel free to send it in and i will do it for you anyway this is brendan this looks like well it's definitely not a model is it it's another american loco i would assume i always tend to label non-british engines american so if it's not american let me know but i think that one is but sometimes I say they're American and they're European, so I've got to watch it. But that's Brendan, thank you for that. And the last one in this section is Ashley and Regan, who's got, looks like, the blue rapier, maybe? It's a lovely electric locomotive, looks like a Hornby one, maybe. And that one's Ashley and Regan, yes. Yeah. So I love that, and actually had one of those in, one of the blue rapiers, uh, this week, well, last week now, uh, to service and fit DCC2. And that was an interesting project, to say the least, so... 
Thank you for those Wall of Fame entries. If yours wasn't in there, don't worry. Um, I do have some more to do later on, and there's also a few down on the computer which came in over the last couple of days. So I'll get to those next week. So let's figure out what I'm going to do next. Oh, yes, I said I was going to chat with you guys for a little while. And by the way, if today's show goes on for longer than an hour, um, if you mind, let me know. If you don't mind, um, I will carry on, and that's fine. Oh, 8-bit Mega Blade, just as I've looked down, so very good timing, 8-bit Mega Blade. Hard name to say, though, hard for me. He says, I'm wondering at the end of the stream or in another vid, could you run a super long train with all of the wagons you have shown? By me now, you're asking. Now, the thing is, with these live streams, I can't do super, super long trains because you'd all be waiting for me uh, to get it set up. But uh, next week, if I don't if I just do one of those sort of um, casual, run some trains, have a bit of a conversation video, we could, if you want, um, do a bit of a project where I get loads of rolling stock and make a ludicrously long train. And I'll tell you now, it's a recipe for disaster because there's going to be derailments and uh, things are going to go wrong. But uh, sure, if you want me to do that, I will absolutely do it and we'll, we'll give it a try. If not, I'll probably do it in a video at some point for you. But uh, thank you very much for the super chat. And of course, <clears throat> my voice is starting to go. That's 40 minutes of talking. I need to improve that um, of course um, you will be entered to win a bullman so if you want a bullman um, you might win one so <laughs> okay um, Andrew Brain Br Brain <laughs> sorry uh, Brian I would think says can I have a shout out yeah if you can't tell I'm terrible at pronouncing names please don't take it personally I'm not trying to offend anybody obviously but if I say your name wrong just let me know and I'll try and correct it if I see it um, Click the dollar sign below the chat, said Ugly Duckman. Oh, he's telling people how to super chat. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, what is your favourite British car of all time? Who said that? Uh, George Pomonos. Oh, it's him again. Sorry, I, I'm sorry for not being able to say your name. I don't know really. I don't. I'm not really into cars. Um, trying to think of video game cars. No, I've got really. Mine's gone a little bit blank there. Sorry about that. I'm not really into cars though. Sorry about that. Um, New Central Trains says, uh, Sam, please can you run an HST of your choice? That would be nice. It's been a long time since I've run an HST, so that's a good idea. We'll try and run a uh, high-speed train. Oh, Charlie Young, this is a controversial one. He says, hey, Sam, who makes the better Thomas models, Hornby or Backman? Oh, that's a tricky one. Um, Hornby ones run better. Hornby ones don't blow up and the motors don't explode and uh, go super slow and make smoke. Uh, so they run better. Uh, they are tender driven a lot of the time, which I don't like, but generally they are better uh, for reliability. Backman are much more like the show as far as I know, and they've got a lot more character them, to them. Uh, the, Back the Backman Thomas Locos are designed to be Thomas characters. The Hornby Thomas Locos are just um, existing locomotives that have been converted to look a bit like Thomas Loco, so it doesn't quite work. So that's that's the answer. There's no best between them, but the, they both have pros and cons. All right, um, Bloom says, Sam, where can I send you pictures? You can email them to me at samstrains@outlook.com. I don't have an email address I can put up, but normally it pops up at the end of every video, so if you want it, uh, you'll get it there. It's probably in the description of this stream as well. So uh, Charlie Young says, Sam answered my question. Yes, I did, and if anyone's asking questions and I don't see it, I'm sorry, I'm not blanking anybody. It's just this chat is going pretty quick. Well, you know how quick it's going. And if I miss you, I miss you, uh, so I'm sorry. Um, anyway... Uh, William Frost says, can you run a Class 66, please? Yeah, that's a nice idea. I'll try that sometime. Amory Junction says, can I have a shout-out, please? Are you going to ever add more scenery to your layout? I'd love to, but the problem is, if you look here, for example, this is, in, uh, this is in an area where we walk. So to get into the room, we have to step over this track. Now, if I built lots of scenery onto that section, I'd also have to step over the scenery, and to be honest after a week or maybe after a month, certainly after a year, it's going to be looking tatty. And, uh, you know, I just don't want to have accidents and destroy scenery that takes weeks to produce. But certainly if I ever build a proper layout on baseboards, scenery is going to be a big consideration. I'm going to do as much scenery as I can. So, yes, maybe one day I'll be doing some more scenery, but uh, probably not on this layout, uh, put it that way. Um, Eddie Owen says, a rake of Bullmans. Yes, actually, technically, because... Because <laughs> I've got ten of these Bullmans, I could make a rake of Bullmans, and maybe I should do that before I before I uh, give them away. But uh, yeah, that would be very interesting. <laughs> uh, quite surreal, don't you think? If someone hasn't heard of Bullman before, uh, and they come visit my channel for the first time and see that, I don't think they'll come back. 
Um, blah, blah, blah. Next month I will see ta Tornado, says Little Western Eleven. You know, that's awesome. I don't think I've ever seen Tornado in the flesh, so that would be fantastic. And she came to the to the Great Central, I think it was. Or was it Butterly? She might have come to Butterly quite recently, and I missed it, unfortunately, but uh, never mind. Um, are you ever going to get a Dapol Class 68, says Train Spotter 2003? Uh, I hadn't planned to, but you never know if I see one for a good price, and I just think at the time that looks nice. I might try and get one. Um, Michael Aldred says, in your churchyard area, can you put some headstones in? That's a nice idea. Yes, that's a good idea. Um, R2D2 versus trains <laughs> says, sent two euros and said it's five to request a train ride. Yes, that is. Um, I'm sorry to charge people for requests. That's not really what this is. It's basically you guys choosing to support the channel and it's a way of me saying thank you. But the thing is, if I, if I give away them for free, I'd get too many requests and it just wouldn't be fair. I wouldn't be able to give everybody one, obviously. So that's the way I'm uh, keeping it down. Um, <laughs> it's train fun says, I'm eating pizza and I had to cook today. Oh, that's a shame. Luckily, I had my meal got ready today because it was a birthday meal so I'm very very lucky there and it's fantastic we had a big roast with um, with all the trimming, trimmings. Okay so that's that what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to go to a bit of a running session because it's been 45 minutes of me talking and whether you like me or whether you don't that is a lot of talking so uh, let's not do any more of that. I'm going to get some super chats done and dusted right now so uh, let's have a look at some of these. So Jake Darlin, uh, what did he say? He wants to see uh, the BR Green Diesel with some maroons. And I've done it again, I haven't got a pen. Oh yeah, I have got a pen, here it is. So what did you want? Um, did he specify? No, just a BR Green Diesel. Oh, you're letting me choose. That's kind of cheating. You should be choosing if you're paying <laughs> uh, with the maroons. Okay, yep, I'll do my best with that. It might be the LMS coaches, though, because the My Model Railway Village coaches aren't very reliable. They tend to derail, and that's not a good recipe when you're uh, live streaming. So Michael wanted the B12 with the bird's eye. Yep, I'll know what I mean. I've just scribbled, really. Um, he's going to send... Uh, the Ugly Duckman is going to send me a link to a Backman Mogul. I really like the look of the Backman Mogul, so I will try and get one of those one day, the Ugly Duckman. And when I do, if I do, I'll run it just for you. And uh, block 8 big, 8 bit Mega Blade, there he is, wants to do the big long train, so we'll do that at some point. So, right, what I'm going to do then is uh, I'm going to show you some of the locos I, uh, I got for my birthday, and then I'll go for a break. So here's one of them. It's a Castle Class. Now, I always said the castle class was too expensive for me. It was, um, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I couldn't justify spending £170 or whatever it was. And my family got wind of that and they went and bought me one. So thank you so much to those. Um, I wouldn't have got one otherwise, so that's fantastic. It means I've had to go back on my word, but uh, looking at it, it is really, really brilliant. So that's the castle class. And I also got this, and it's less easy to tell what this is, but uh, this is a Backman Crab. And I actually went to the Great Central Railway a few weeks ago and I saw the crab there and thought just how wonderful it is so my family actually uh, clubbed together and bought me a crab as well uh, from Hatton's it was so uh, that is fantastic and I'm going to get her running in just a second so what I'm going to do is as you notice I've put my rolling stock onto a tray so that I can move it easily and that means I can get it down to the front have a little break uh, you guys can listen to some music go and get yourself a cup of tea or a biscuit come on it's Sunday you can at least uh, you can at least do that and uh, I'll be right back in just a few minutes ready to actually run some trains uh, it's about time we did that. Okay, let's do that then. Uh, thank you all for watching. Don't go anywhere. Well, you can if you like, but uh, you, want, you might miss some of this stuff going. So uh, if you want, go someplace, get yourself a drink or something, and uh, I'll be back in around five minutes. Okay, where's this uh, back soon thing? Oh, here it is. All right, cheers everyone. I'll see you in just a sec. Could you not hear that? Is that better? <laughs> oh man, that means I've got to talk about that again. Right, all I was saying <laughs> all I was saying was, is that better? Right. All I was that that wasn't a joke, actually, that wasn't a joke. All I was saying was, welcome back. I've been talking about Bullman and things, and I've been thanking the super chat. So a massive thank you to I'm sorry about that. Um, whoever's next. It was Trainfan28. Thank you to you. You didn't leave a request, but if there's something you'd like me to run, just let me know. That was Twain, Trainfan28. Thank you to you. R2D2 says, can you probably run boring LNER Flying Scotsman with LNER Teaks? Uh, absolutely, there's nothing... Well, come on now. The Flying Scotsman's not boring. Um, everyone tell him the Flying Scotsman is not boring. And yes, I will do that. Obviously, we're running out of time a little bit now, but I'll get round to it. I will figure out a way. 
Uh, Wish my live shows on Wednesday nights did half as well, said Sparky107107, who actually sent 20 Canadian dollars. So uh, that's really, really kind of you. Thank you so much. Um, if you send me the link to your live show on Wednesday nights, I will definitely take a look. That sounds fantastic. And uh, PK, PKC7412 said, Hi, can you run your Highland Locos with mixed traffic and passenger, please? Okay, right, I will do that. So, thank you very much for that. That's fantastic. And Charles Curtis sent $5. Um, for a Snapchat, uh, for a super chat, Snapchat. No, this isn't Snapchat. Um, but he didn't leave a request. So Charles, if you want me to run something for you, uh, let me know. If you don't, that's fine. Thank you very much anyway. Right. Um, oh, I've gone on wasted time now, haven't I? By uh, not having my microphone turned on. I'm sorry about that. That is completely my fault. It wasn't the, your computer's fault. And I bet loads of people got totally deafened when the sound came back on. <laughs> right. So I did show this a second ago, but I guess you won't have known what I was on about. So. What I've done is, I've got the crab on the outer line, and she's going to be pulling a selection of some of my new rolling stock, so you can see those green wagons I looked at. Uh, there's a few of the North Stand, the Pepsi, and inexplicably I've put the Teak on the back, so a little bit of a passenger service there. Then on the middle line I've got Michael's uh, B12, the Trying B12, with some uh, fish vans, uh, the Fish Fingers vans. I actually delved into my rolling stock cabinets and I find that I've only actually got one fish finger wagon already. So uh, that means I, I have, what, what's that, six? Six, yep, yeah, six in total. There is one actually at the back which has got a different coloured roof inexplicably. Uh, so it looks like it isn't there at all, but it is. Uh, so there is one just here, but you might not be able to see it. And then of course I've got the, uh, the BR Green Diesel with some maroon coaches as requested. I forget who requested that now, but whoever it was, thank you very much for doing that. And without any further ado, let's have a bit of a running session then and get this lot going. Now the Hymec doesn't, doesn't sound too healthy for some reason, or maybe it's just not used to pulling quite this much. Oh no, it's gone just fine. So that's alright. We've got the, uh, the B12 running a little bit dangerously actually without any uh, brake van on the end. And uh, it did get stuck on the points, but uh, off it goes. So there it is with the Fish Fingers vans. Cars. No, yeah, Vans is right. Oh, why do I always get that messed up? And I'm just bringing back into the shop the crab just so that you can see her. This is the crab I got for my birthday yesterday. It isn't just like the one we saw at the Great Central Railway, but it's certainly in a very similar livery. So here she goes. Let's get her started with uh, some of the rolling stock from the train fare. Now, she's a brand new loco, so I didn't really... <laughs> I'm not brave enough, basically, to run her with a complete massive long train but uh, I will get some of my powerful locos together probably next week and I'll do my best to run some uh, crazy long trains but uh, here comes the high make now up towards the church and Michael did suggest to put some headstones in the graveyard so that's fantastic uh, I said that wrong that train not the engine said R2 v D2 versus trains okay I don't know what you mean but uh, thank you for that anyway I'll try and figure out what you mean in time for next week oh I've just missed the crab haven't I Oh damn, or oh crab, I suppose I could say. But uh, there she goes, underneath the bookcase just behind me here. Look at that, that's quite a good strain, isn't it? I think the uh, the crabs were for mixed traffic, weren't they? I think so. So uh, that's cool. And uh, there goes Michael's B12, looking very cool actually with the uh, the fish vans. Well, fish finger vans. If I had more time, I would of course put a brake van on the back. I don't like doing it without <laughs> without brake vans, but uh, never mind. And there goes the crab, just missed her there as she goes along with her freight. But as you can see, quite a good puller. And I didn't mention actually, but some of those green wagons have had extra weights put into them, which uh, makes, it, makes some of them really, really heavy. And I suppose that makes it even more of a, a good bargain, really. But uh, yeah, that's pretty good. And uh, let's follow the B12 then as she goes around. Here she comes, she'll be uh, going past the country station, I reckon. There she is. And uh, now she's coming down the main straight. If you want to call it the main straight, I don't know. And uh, back around to the front. So there we go. I think what I'm going to do is clear some of these lines off. In fact, shall I do some live train moving? <laughs> see how this works because I've got two more super chats that I need to do and obviously if I get any more now thank you very 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 much I'm very grateful for them but what I might have to do is save them till next week uh, just because I don't want to ruin my chances of uh, finishing anytime soon so the Hymex just gone by I'm going to open up this these points so that the B12 can move on to the same line Whoa, and she's going very fast, so I better stop her before she crashes into the back and the crab should be on her way somewhere I can still hear her running 
Yeah, oh, I can hear her. Shall we go and follow her because she's uh, she's not too close yet. So if I go and flick the camera over, you might just see her come by. Yep, hopefully we'll see her. Oh, yes. Look at that. And I was never a massive fan of the crabs, to be honest. I never really got why people loved them so much. And the reason why is because the only crab I had was in BR Black and it had been weathered. And I never really, I mean, I liked it. I thought, yeah, it's a smart engine. But until I saw this maroon one, in fact, in, until I saw the maroon one at the Great Western, Ra Great Central Railway, um, I really didn't appreciate them for how beautiful they are. But uh, now I do. I think uh, the crabs are absolutely beautiful. So just out of shot anyway, where I'm pointing now, uh, there is a, a, a point which I'm just going to open. I'm sorry if my head gets in the way of the camera. It probably will. And I'm going to reverse the crab into those sidings. Oh, something's going to derail. I know it. Ooh. I tempted fate and I didn't regret it. Wow, that's that's pretty impressive. Okay, so let's go and grab a Flying Scotsman. And the Flying Scotsman, I always, in fact, shall I? Oh, I was gonna suggest running the BR Flying Scotsman, but I don't expect that's what uh, he had in mind. So I will be, uh, I'll be a cliche and I'll put the classic one on. Uh, this is the, uh, it's not Triang, it's the Triang design, it's the Triang tooling was made with the Triang tooling, uh, but it's a slightly later Hornby one, though it is still loco driven. Now, is my microphone wire going to be long enough to reach the tender cabinet? Yes, just about. Oh, I'm having to really stretch to reach this one. Um, yep, Ooh, I can reach it, okay. You see, normally I would go to another break to, uh, to do, oh, oh, that was bad. I dropped the tender, no. Uh, it's, luckily, it's absolutely fine. As I was saying, normally I would go to another break and uh, swap all this stuff over, but uh, you, you guys have just sat through a break, so I'm not gonna make you go to another. But uh, what I will do is put some teaks on, and an interesting thing is I never drop things. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I've ever dropped a locomotive before, and I suppose it's just because I'm a bit nervous today that I dropped that tender, but uh, I need to be a bit more careful. But uh, yeah, luckily I'd never drop locos and oof, that's not a healthy thing to be saying, is it? That's really tempting fate. But uh, yeah, generally I'm more careful than that. Right, so I've got four teaks. I don't know, oh, I haven't picked up a brake. Not doing very well with brakes, am I? But I suppose in real life, these coaches would have been uh, equipped with brakes in the first place. So that's not too much of a problem. Okay, so let's get this. I've brought four because um, well, I think in the train sets of the 1970s, they came with three coaches, if that's right. Uh, so I'm just adding a little bit more to that. I suppose seven coaches is more of an acceptable figure, really, especially for the Flying Scotsman. But uh, we'll go with four, just uh, for the, so that you're not watching me <laughs> put seven coaches onto the track. Let's check that she actually works. Yep, she does, but she wants to go forwards. So that's fine. Shall I leave her going? Yep, and I'll just figure out what else I need to set up. There was one more, wasn't there? Uh, so what else was it? So we got the Scotsman and the Teaks. Um, oh, a Highland Loco. Now, what do you mean by a Highland Loco? Um, I suppose you mean some kind of Caledonian Loco? Or shall I put the Hattons Highland Loco on? I suppose that's really a Caledonian Loco, isn't it? But, uh, hmm, yeah, shall I do that? We all like the, the Hattons Loco, right? So this is a Scottish Loco. It's, um, it's the Barclay 040. It does come from uh, the Highlands, I suppose. Put it on there. I realize you might not be able to see it too great, by the way, uh, because of the, uh, the back of the, oh, well, it's the back of the B12 train. Now, what did he want me to run with it? Uh, so he put uh, PKC put 7412 put, uh, hi, can you run your Highland Locos with mixed freight and passenger, please? Okay, well, that's a good idea because what I'll be able to do is run some more of that new rolling stock I bought. So what I'm going to do is just off the top of my head, grab some Pullman coaches. And I think this is actually going to be a really nice opportunity to show how strong the Hatton's Barclay 040 is. And actually, I don't know myself. I don't know how much power she's got. So there's a couple of Pullman coaches. I'm just going to pull in this tray. And uh, what do you think's what do you think's looking good? I'll grab the seven up. Oh, that's a bit of a modern wagon, isn't it? For her? but never mind. There goes the Flying Scotsman. Uh, I'll grab some of these. I don't want to go too far with it, but we'll put a few on. Okay. So I've got my Arnold Sands, my bread wagon. I love bread. Put it on away from the point. Got the seven up wagon. 
uh, my X Triang grey wagon, which I really like, and then a couple of Pullmans. So I put the non brake on first, and luckily I did manage to grab a brake this time, so that's cool. Is that on properly? It doesn't sound like it is. Yep, yeah, it is now. Okay. Go on, couple, and let's move the loco forwards a bit so I'm not having to reach out of shot. Oh, this is such a lovely loco, by the way, this uh, Hatton's Caledonian one. So, I'm sorry to you who requested this. If you, uh, if you didn't mean, if you had a specific loco in mind, then it wasn't this one. Um, I'm sorry. But uh, this is in the Caledonian livery, and Caledonian locos are from Scottish, uh, from the Scottish Highlands, I think. So, uh, hopefully that will be okay for you, but uh, here she goes. I'm going to start her off at a sort of moderate speed, and I'll follow her around. She really is a sight to see, though. I know this uh, this filming on the stream right now isn't going to be uh, enough to do her justice, but uh, seriously, if you can get yourself one, if you can pre-order yourself one, uh, you won't regret it. They really are impressive. There it goes. Of course, another feature of it is that it is such a slow, gentle runner. But that's exactly what you want. That's exactly what you want. In a loco that size, I mean, if it was an HST, <laughs> it would be a serious problem. But uh, it's just uh, it's just as you'd expect, really, isn't it, of a loco that size. Now, we'll take a look at the Flying Scotsman. In fact, they're going to be crossing over any minute now. So if I leave this uh, this particular camera running, the Flying Scotsman is going to come thundering past. Yeah, there he goes. Should we follow the Scotsman for a second, then? Uh, let's, oh no, oh, I've clicked on the wrong camera. At least I've not done that too much today. There she goes, thundering down the main street, looking fantastic. So that was a good idea, not a boring idea at all, by the way. I think the Flying Scotsman's a fantastic, classic idea. So don't, don't call the Flying Scotsman boring, I, I like that. That's a good idea, and thank you very much to everybody, by the way, who supported me today with the Super Chat. Okay, shall I leave those running? I'd better stop them, hadn't I, because I'm going to get sent into a frenzy if uh, something derails while I'm talking. So I'm just going to head over and stop them. Um, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll wait for the, uh, the Caledonian Loco to get back to the front. Or the Barclay 040. Saddle tank engine. I always wondered, where did they keep the coal on these? Because I know Barclay did make some fireless locomotives, but I don't think this is one of them. Or it might be, I don't know. But uh, if anybody knows, <laughs> let me know, because <laughs> I'm ignorant. And I'd like to know. So there we go. Quite some interesting engines running today. And again, I'm sorry, I know it's gone past six o'clock, but uh, I'll wrap things up anyway. We'll have a few more minutes uh, looking at things and that, but uh, yeah. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Okay, let's have a look at some more of the Wall of Fame entries then. I've got to get through these. Uh, so uh, here we go with some more. I'm going to go through them quite quick because I know I've done quite a bit of this already. So we've got William E. And this is, how, how about this for something crazy? After what we've just run. The Flying Scotsman. So thank you, William, for sending in that. I love the Flying Scotsman. I think everybody does. Everybody loves the Flying Scotsman. Yoti George 12. I can't remember what the story with this was, but it is a real loco uh, in a workshop somewhere. Looks like it's uh, raised up. Uh, to have some maintenance done. So that's very cool. Thank you very much for sending that. Um, Oakley Top sent, oh, Smokey Joe. Smokey Joe's already been brought up in conversation today, but uh, that looks like a train set of some kind. It's got some lovely Hornby wagons coupled to the back of that. So thank you, Oakley Top, for sending that. Fazbear, Fazbear, as in Freddy Fazbear. Oh dear, let's not bring him up. 53 sent in this. This is not a local I recognise, so I don't know, 50 points to anybody who does recognise it and who can name it. Go on, race to your keyboards. All right, and then we've got Ian J who sent this. I think, oh, is that an H class or is it an M7? You know, that's really bad that I don't recognise that. I think it's an, uh, oh, I don't know. I'm going to guess that it's the H class, is it? I don't know, but it's in the BR black, which is confusing because I'm used to looking at the H class in uh, the SECR green. But that's a beautiful, beautiful loco. I wouldn't mind one of those in that livery. And then Cooper G, a man after my own heart, sent in what looks like a Merchant Navy class. Rebuilt, of course. Very, very lovely. Love that one. And because I'm Batman, sent in, he must have sent this in at around Christmas time. Uh, it's a, a layout with a lot of snow on it, and you can see down at the bottom there we've got uh, Toby, the tram engine there, doing some work, I assume. He, doesn't, he looks a bit uh, 
like he's been up to something. I don't know what, but uh, yeah, maybe because I'm Batman will be able to tell us what Toby had been up to there. But uh, yeah, that's those. Thank you very much for those. Uh, that's fantastic. And of course, if you want to send in photos to have put up on the Wall of Fame, and the Wall of Fame you can just about see behind me there, it's really filling up this year, so it's fantastic. If you want to have a picture sent in, take one, draw one, whatever you like, and email it to me at samstrainsatoutlook.com. The email address is in the description. And I'll print it off and I'll put it up, up on the wall. And these days I'll show it during a live stream as well which should be fantastic so I think that's all I've got to say what I'm going to do now is I'm going to thank all of my super chats for this week and there have been loads so to anybody who's super chatted or even considered it just thank you you know you guys are the people keeping this channel alive and uh, with you guys and with your help I might be able to keep doing this for a good long time yet so thank you for that right let me thank you all um, for doing this let me refresh it make sure I don't forget anybody uh, so we had Jake Darling of course thank you darling <laughs> Uh, Michael Aldred, um, yes, thank you for that. LaserJet, the Ugly Duckman, uh, you two, thank you very much. And again, LaserJet, it's lovely to hear from you again, and thank you for, for the uh, for the two pounds. That's very kind of you. Um, Eight Bit Mega Blade, there we go. It works better if I say it slowly. There we go. Thank you very much to you. R two D two versus Trains has sent a couple over the time. Uh, he asked for the Flying Scotsman. Uh, Trainfan twenty eight, um, thank you very much to you. That's very kind of you. And a big thank you to Sparky one oh seven one oh seven who sent 20 Canadian dollars thank you so much that is too much by the way I don't expect anybody well I don't expect anybody to send super chats at all but uh, 20 dollars is crazy so thank you for that um, PKC 7412 you sent one thank you Charles Curtis also sent one and R2D2 versus trains we had you already? Yeah, you sent quite a couple. You sent several. So uh, thank you to you. Um, you know, you're all fantastic. And even if you're just here watching, believe me, that's enough. That is enough to support me. So thank you all very much for watching tonight. What I think I'm going to do is uh, give you a few hints for next week. Now, something I forgot to mention at the start is that these uh, Sunday streams are going to be happening instead of my Monday videos. Because if I did a Monday video as well, you'd be having stuff going up Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday. And I think that's a little bit too much, to be honest. So I'm having a break from the Monday videos so you get in this instead but you know it's been an hour and a quarter so <laughs> hopefully you won't feel short changed uh, so I've got nothing going out tomorrow but on Wednesday I have a couple of friends going shunting I'm not going to say anything about that but we're going to have uh, two friendly engines going shunting together to try and put some trains together so hopefully if you like shunting that will be interesting. And then Saturday, I'm going to be doing a very much requested review of a very popular 280 locomotive. And if Callum's watching right now, um, that will uh, hopefully appeal to Callum. And if anybody knows Callum of SDJR7F, 7, 7F88 speaking, sorry, almost forgot your username then, uh, they all know exactly what locomotive I'm talking about. And uh, by the way, speaking of Callum, uh, we did another little... Um, collaboration on uh, on Friday it was where we did a layout to layout service and that was great fun so if you haven't seen that check it out it was uh, two videos ago uh, so uh, that was great fun but for now I'll just have a little chat with some of you guys just to sign off uh, hopefully my camera battery is still doing well it's actually been really good hasn't it uh, an hour and 15 minutes it's pretty good and I hope it's gone pretty much without a hitch I did forget to switch the uh, the microphone on at one point which is ridiculous in fact I don't know why I switched it off because I was only gone for five minutes force of habit I suppose but uh, sorry about that um, it was probably five minutes of very annoying streaming right there but uh, never mind okay so the trig says goodbye uh, John 55010 says hi so uh, I hope you haven't just joined, otherwise you might be a bit disappointed. But uh, hi, hi anyway. Um, Adam Rushton says, Hi Sam, there is a Bullet Pacific at the Seven Valley Railway. It is rebuilt 34027 Tor Valley and it is operational. Please do a video on the Seven Valley Railway, Sam. Okay, that sounds great. That's not one I've ever been to before, but I'd love to. That would be fantastic. Mark says, Thanks for a fun stream. Thank you. Uh, thanks Mark, glad you enjoyed it. I don't know if the train fare thing works on streams. I don't know if it takes too long. Uh, but if you enjoyed it, that's good. And if you've got any ideas for next week, do you want me? To, let me know in the chat. Actually, let me know if you've got a thought on this. I can do a running session if you like with history and everything like that, or we can just do something really laid back. I can run some engines. I can do some requests. Um, I can do that super long train that somebody was asking for. That would be fun, I think. Um, get loads of rolling stock together. Probably cause a derailment, uh, but it might be fun. Or I could do something else. So if you've got an idea, let me know just before I go in the chat, and we'll see what uh, what's going. 
going on. Uh, Dinning's Transport Hub says, Sam, you got any DMUs? Caps, sorry, yeah, he left, he said he left his caps lock on. Yeah, I've got a few DMUs. Um, I'm trying to think if I'm running any in videos anytime soon. I think so. There's... Um, yeah, uh, yeah, the uh, the 101, I think it is, is going to be running in a video. So, yeah, I've got some DMUs, and you'll be able to see them soon, hopefully. Um, Speedline Railway Train says, this was entertaining. Well, thank you. Glad it was entertaining. I'm glad it wasn't just boring. Uh, I still can't believe that people don't find this sort of thing boring, but you don't. Well, a lot of you don't. So, uh, I, again, thank you for that. Uh, Box Fort Bros says, I have the flu. <laughs> that sounds pretty rough. And you're still watching having the flu. That That is rough. So, I hope you feel better soon. Sorry you've got the flu. Um, Mark's thanking the, th the super chat people. That's that's very kind of you, Mark. Thank you for doing that. Uh, Lukad Hagman says happy birthday from Aust Austria. Well, that's I didn't, I didn't realize I had any viewers in Austria. So thank you for that. Thanks a lot. It was a good birthday. Had a lot of fun. Um, Tatar until next time says William Town. See you, William. Thank you very much. Um, it's train fun says. Uh, Do you have a train with Europia Cutlers? U Europa Couplers? Are they the European couplings I was on about? Yes, I've got. At least uh, two. I've got two of them, I think. So, yes, I can do it. Um, did I just get here at the end? Says Spam Track. Yes, I think you did. But you got a little shout out. So, hopefully, that's okay. Kyle17784 says, How do I send a picture? I'll tell you one more time and then it's up to you. You have to email it to me at samstrains at outlook.com and I'll get that and print it out for you. Um, Caleb. D Hill says, can you do more races? Okay, I'll try and do some more races. I don't like racing my best locos, but certainly with the Thomas ones, um, I don't mind just because they weren't quite as expensive. But certainly I'm not going to do it with any 200 pound engines or anything like that. Um, Ethan Schutt says, it's your birthday. Um, it was yesterday. Yeah, it was my birthday yesterday. <laughs> and uh, B Mr. BNSF train fan says, how many of those passenger car trans transitions? Oh, transitions. You mean the, the intro style video? Um, well, it's just one. It's one clip, and then sometimes I redesign the coaches so that it looks like something different. And if you want to know what I'm on about, um, it's this. Is that what you meant? Is that what you meant? I hope so. Well, that's that anyway. Um, there's only one. I just changed the design around so that it looks like I've got a ton of them. Um, DCC Flying Scotsman says the Triggs. Um, yes, I have got a DCC Flying Scotsman. I did have a Triang DCC Flying Scotsman, but I de-chipped it in the end and it's now DC again. Anyway, uh, oh, and Caleb <laughs> says it's Caleb. Is that right? Caleb? It's not Caleb. Okay, sorry about that. Thank you for letting me know. Anyway, Right, uh, one more then. Owens Railway says, can you do a comparison on the DJM models and Hornby J94? That's a very good idea, and yes, I will try and do that at some point. Uh, I like that idea, and uh, it is an idea I've had in the past. So yes, I'll do that uh, sometime soon, hopefully. Anyway, folks, thank you all for your company. Thank you to everyone who sent a super chat. You know you don't have to, uh, but I am massively grateful for those of you who have. And for those of you who have just been watching, even if you don't think you'll be able to afford a super chat, just watching uh, is massively, massively helpful to me, and it does really genuinely help to keep me going. So to everybody who's watched, thank you so much. I'll be back next week. It's up to you guys what I do. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've got an idea. I'm leaning towards having sort of a casual running session slash uh, chat, all that kind of thing. So if you like the idea of that, let me know, and I will certainly do it. But for now, I think I'm going to sign off. So thank you very much for, for all your support and for watching, and I'll see you very soon. All right, folks. See you next time. Well, that's the end of today's live stream, so thanks to everyone for joining me, and I really hope you all enjoyed it. As always, if you've got any ideas for future streams, I'd be very glad to hear them, so feel free to post them down below in the comments. Sam's Trains Live will be back next Sunday night at 5pm UK time, so until then, look after yourselves, and I'll see you during the week with some more new videos. Cheers, everybody.